true God emanating certain forms that were called the aeons, all of which were pure goodness. But one of these, Sophia, who's also associated with wisdom, fell. She had a, a fall, a fall. And, and in that fall, uh, out of the true spiritual realm, she created something called the Demiurge. And that Demiurge, in turn, created the world and created human beings. Um, but the Plerima took pity on human beings and made sure that within us was a divine spark, even though we were lost in the realm of matter, in the realm of the world. Um, and here's the really controversial thing about the Gnostics, and this is why the Christians started burning them at the stake, even though arguably Gnosis was the original form of Christianity. Because the Gnostics say that that entity, who the Old Testament calls Yahweh or Jehovah, he was the Demiurge. They say he's not a real God at all. They say that the real God is far beyond that. And the creature that we've been taught to worship as a God is not God at all. He's some pumped up supernatural entity who wants to be admired and worshipped and adored um, and, and, and has this huge ego and enchains human beings as his eternal servants and uh, created uh, entities called archons, uh, evil angels, to keep mankind in chains. And uh, certain teachers were sent to free us from the control of this demiurge. And one of those entities was Christ. The Gnostics saw Jesus Christ as the greatest Gnostic teacher who was sent to liberate us from the control of the Demiurge. And you know, it's true. If you look at the behavior of the church, it's very different from anything that Christ says. Nowhere in the words of Christ, anywhere in the gospel, will you tell Christ, will you find Christ telling us to burn people at the stake, for example. No way. Christ is a beautiful, beautiful figure who brings true knowledge, true gnosis to the world. And he has, in a sense, been hijacked by the money men and the bureaucrats and the power mongers of the church uh, at, uh, in, in a misleading uh, process. And Gnosticism, because it saw this clear, uh, was one of the first victims uh, of um, the, that, that fanatical literalist faction in the church that became the, the Roman Catholic Church and, and united with the power of Rome to crush ancient Egypt. The Gnostics were the first to be burnt at the stake in terrible, terrible ways for their, for their beliefs and went, uh, went underground. And it's interesting that how the Gnostics take some of the familiar stories from the Bible, and again, this is, of course, highly heretical material, uh, but we have been taught to believe that uh, in the Garden of Eden, the serpent was the bad guy. But for the Gnostics in the Garden of Eden, the serpent was actually the good guy. They say that what the serpent is doing is he's saying to mankind, wake up remember who you are. You have to have knowledge. You have to know the difference between good and evil. You have to be able to make those choices. You can't remain in darkness. This is what the Gnostics say. So, so they don't see the serpent as an evil figure at all. They see the serpent as bringing the light of Gnosis uh, to mankind and pointing out, the serpent does say in that story, after Adam and Eve have eaten of the of um, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, he, he said, didn't God tell you that you would die if you did this? Yeah, he did tell us that we would die. And did you die? No. What does that make God? That creature that you call God is not a liar. Profoundly subversive and heretical material. But uh, for that sin of seeking knowledge of good and evil, of fulfilling the potential of our consciousness, for that sin, Adam and Eve were driven out of the Garden of Eden in a most humiliating and uh, terrifying fashion. And uh, angels were posted at the entrance to the garden with flaming swords to prevent us from ever gaining access to the tree of life. And it's interesting how the book of Genesis says, lest they become gods like us. Who are those us that's being spoken of in the book of Genesis? And here's a mysterious thing about the tree of life. Later Gnostic sects, because Gnosticism, although driven underground, survived, and it resurfaced in France in a form called Catharism. 
Gnostic sects had a very strange idea about what the tree of life was. It was a mushroom. And that's actually a recognizable species of visionary mushroom. That is the Amanita muscaria, that is the fly agaric, which is used in shamanistic uh, ceremonies throughout the world. That some kind of eye-opening property in the mushrooms is being, is being considered here. We'll come back to what that might mean. So the Gnostics, just as they turned the Garden of Eden story upside down, they turned the flood story upside down as well. It wasn't to punish evil as the Old Testament tells us, but to punish humanity for having risen so high and to take the light, the, the gnosis that was growing amongst men. And the Gnostic texts say the survivors were thrown into great distraction and into a life of toil so that mankind might be occupied with worldly affairs and might not have the opportunity of being devoted to the Holy Spirit. And, uh, you know, throughout history, those who have sought the liberating gnosis, the light, the, 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 the knowledge of the true nature of things have been subjected to persecution. And I just want to briefly touch on the tragic story of the Cathars uh, who lived in what is now southwest France uh, in the area called the Languedoc and who uh, undoubtedly were a Gnostic form of Christianity. They held the figure of Christ in the highest order. Uh, and, and for him, he was, as I mentioned earlier, the supreme Gnostic teacher. Uh, but on the other hand, the Cathars regarded the Pope in Rome as the devil's agent on earth. And uh, they utterly opposed the rule of the popes. And uh, for that, the Gnostics earned the anger of the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, unlike Roman Catholicism of that period, which wanted to keep the populace ignorant and illiterate, the, the Cathars promoted universal literacy. They believed in the absolute equality of men and women. Uh, they were the first paper makers in Europe because they were so keen on literacy. They, they it really was truly a liberating doctrine that was taught in Catharism. And they, they created a wonderful, free, creative, artistic society. You've heard of the troubadours? They came from the Languedoc. They were originally from, uh, from, the, from the Cathars. But uh, huh, as, they, as they flourished and grew, the, 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 the Church of Rome became more and more angry with them. And finally, it sent a crusade against them. And that's called the Albigensian Crusades because Albi was one of the cities in the Languedoc. And this was a terrible, terrible thing that happened back there uh, in, in, in France um, in um, the, the 1200s. Terrible things were done to the Cathars. This entire religion, this entire culture, this entire way of life was utterly destroyed. Tens of thousands of people were murdered. Whole cities were razed to the ground. There was burning at the stake at an enormous scale. Uh, the books of the Cathars were all destroyed. I mean, just the worst thing that you can possibly imagine took place and happened to them. And uh, by the, the, the mid-13th century, they were gone. They were utterly, utterly wiped out. And uh, their m memory would almost be, be lost to mankind. So that's what happens when you try to practice this ancient wisdom tradition that, that, that took the form of Gnosticism. Uh, you are in danger. And uh, from the Gnostic point of view, the Demiurge and his archons and their human servants, uh, they're always trying to steal the light. And they're certainly uh, trying to do so uh, today. And if the light is growing amongst mankind, as I believe it is, uh, then we can be sure that tremendous archonic forces are at work in the world to suppress it. We shouldn't close our eyes to this. We all want everything to be goodness. But we shouldn't close our eyes to the existence of evil. And we have to be alert and we have to be strong in order to confront that wickedness. Some kind of Gnostic demon. It's some kind of cannibalistic demiurge that should be thoroughly renounced and uh, rejected. <laughs>